My name is Mario Mosberg, I'm 26 years old, and I'm sharing a little bit how it is to live life as a poker player. Mario Mosberg started playing poker at the young age of 13 years old. The now 26-year-old poker millionaire competes with the best in the game, but before his journey in poker began, he made it playing football in the Austrian Bundesliga. Despite that playing football on a professional level was a dream for many others, for Mario it wasn't. For me it was, uh, it was always the, the, the next step, because I was a little bit, I would say, above average in skill-wise, and uh, so you go to the to the Landesauswahl in German and then you go to academy and then you go second team and first team. So it's like always never really a point where like really ask the question, do you really want it? You just like, okay, it's logic because like everyone wants to become a soccer player and I do uh, or did enjoy it a lot. And then when I was like 20 or 21, I started asking this question because for me it was not fulfilling or did not enjoy it. I wasn't happy doing it, like the day-to-day -day operation. Of course, there were moments where I really enjoyed it but it was not every day and I, f I felt a lot of uh, moments where like okay why uh, am I doing this and am I gonna do it? am I going to do this for the next uh, 15 years and then I really asked myself the question would I be happy if I stay where I am which is like basically Austria in the Bundesliga or would it change anything if I go to a different league maybe play in a higher club um, would that make me happy or would I enjoy that I wasn't sure, um, and then I made for me the decision, okay, what if I um, stop it and see if I would miss it if I stop playing. After that, I never really looked back. And I still don't miss uh, making, or don't miss soccer, and I still don't regret making that decision. I first uh, discovered poker, I believe it was 2008 or 2009, I don't really remember. It was definitely watching the main event on uh, DSF at that time. At German TV. I remember watching it and being really obsessed with the game right away. At that time there was a poker tube and poker tube was basically YouTube but only poker videos and it was everything from EPT main event WC you could really watch bench watch everything. I went on the poker tube and watched for I think a month straight every video that I could imagine. And then I started playing uh, Play money games on Full Tilt, uh, watched everything. Uh, there was a Full Tilt Poker Academy at that time um, where they had videos where they showed like uh, uh, Chris Ferguson, Howard Lederer, all these guys, they made videos. I think I played three rolls and one dollar tournament for the first two years. I went from like a couple hundred dollars that I grinded up through free rolls and like micro stakes to I think 28,000 after winning. I think it was mini F-tops rush turbo tournament for 14,000 and then the next three weeks I won like another four or five tournaments and I remember I uh, I had the, the account under my name basically uh, but I was 14 years old. Um, I don't know how we resolved that but I still got the money paid out. That was different times, it was 2011 and it was a, I think a week or two weeks before Black Friday and then fully shut down. The first person that I, I met was Hannes Speiser and uh, I still remember like I was probably 15, maybe 16, playing on Sundays uh, at his house and that's where I met uh, Fedor, that was like 2013, where I think Fedor just moved to Vienna. Um, it was before David won the W Cup, so it was right before his, his career really started. I met Mario when I was went 19 or 20 I think. I think he was 17 or 18. So it's a long time ago, I think eight years ago. I was at the absolute beginning of my career and I think he was still playing soccer professionally and loved playing poker. So I was very passionate about poker. He really liked the game and we met very at the beginning. I think he actually played poker longer kind of for fun than I did. I was uh, just starting to like really uh, take it professionally and, and started winning tournaments and that's where we met through a friend. We were both very young and he was still full-time committed on, on football and trying to make it in the first Austrian league. With the soccer it was hard because like I had like either school on Monday or, uh, or practice when I, was, when I was later but it was like maybe I don't know like 10 times a year uh, I drove to Vienna and played the Sunday there. For, for me it was like an outlet to just have a great uh, 
a great hobby and uh, also it was not a decision like later on like when I was uh, deciding to quit poker it was not a decision okay I want to play poker instead of soccer or football it was more of a decision I don't want to play football and I don't know what else to do and then at some point poker kind of filled that hole or like that the purpose and fit it perfectly or does fit perfectly um, but it was never the really the like a transition from one to another. It was like, I don't want to do this, I know that. I don't really know what else I want to do. And then at some point poker came in. I think our conversations were very much about poker, but then we got to know each other. I really got to value him and, and we started building a friendship. And then I started supporting him through his football career because he was in this thing between, does he go all in on football or does he quit football and go all in on poker. I think that was a very difficult decision because his entire life he was training. He, he went to the football academy, he was training to become a top football pro and it was always the thing, okay, like poker, you don't know how it's going to turn out. He won some tournaments, made some money with it, but not. he doesn't know if it's going to work out. But with football, there's this uh, so much sunk cost, so much energy he invested. So I think it was a very difficult struggle or, or decision he had to make at that point in time in his career. Mario decided to take the plunge and go all in on poker, while Fedor was having the summer of his career at the 2016 World Series of Poker in Las Vegas. But despite cashing for over $10 million and winning his first WSOP bracelet, Fedor was close to burning out. I remember 2016 after he was in Vegas for the, the WSOP, the crazy year, and then he, like, he came here. And I, I remember the because uh, my, my grandma was still alive, at that point and she was living here and then Feda came by and we, we rode uh, bikes uh, around St. Perton and he came here and my grandma cooked uh, and then we drove with with, uh, with the bikes to work after us because he had an appointment there. He was really done and, like he came home and it was like he was just like he couldn't think about it. like he was just like completely over the, the one and a half months that he or two months I think it was even at that time. It was completely empty. Since then, we always like I, I really uh, love spending time with him. He's uh, he's been a great friend. I learned uh, a lot from him, uh, like in poker, incredible, but also mostly in life. And for me, he's like a, like a, like a, like an older brother that I can look up to and uh, learn a lot from. I just want Mario to succeed because I, I care about him and I really, it just feels really good to see him doing well. He has such a good and positive energy and, and I, I love spending time with him. It's never uh, exhausting, it's always, I always learn something new, I always go out with more energy than before and that's why I want to see him succeed and why I will give everything I have to make him a better player and, and a better person and he has done the same for me so I'm really grateful that we're good friends and I just wish him the best for for his career and hopefully uh, uh, he wins more main events beyond the, the scoop main. It's crazy to think about that it's, uh, I know him for so long because it doesn't, doesn't click that it's been nine or eight years, it's crazy. Fedor took a step back from the game, Mario started working on his and he started improving. After a couple of years it was time to take the next step and Poker Code held his first grindhouse. A two month long bootcamp type experience where Mario and seven of his poker friends got the knowledge to make it as a professional poker player. Grindhouse won. Uh, that was that was a great time. And I think Grindhouse was not a game changer for him, but like a good kickoff. Like it started, you know, putting things in places, and I think it was like a few good impulses here and there. And then from then on, it was really okay. Now let's look at the long term that set you up in a way that you're going to succeed. And I think he did that very well by himself. Like I gave some good impulses. I think Grindhouse gave good impulses. I think other coaches did, but it's really him deciding for himself that he wants to succeed. And that's uh, what is just very nice to look at from the outside. Honestly, we didn't study that much. We did study, like it def we definitely improved, but we mostly had fun. We played a lot. The most impact was like how to get into the routines and like how to like live as a professional poker player. It was less of the, okay, now we really started like 10 hours. Just the dynamic versus the group, we just have too much fun doing other stuff that 
there's a lot of progress going in that direction. So it was more of the, okay, we, we got to know how, how Matthias' brain work, how Simon's brains work and how Fedor's brain, like how they think about poker and how we can adapt it uh, going forward. So it was more learning the skill set and then applying that over the next months and years. That's where the most progress came from. And the grinders itself was just a, a really, really fun time. After Grindhouse, Mario and his friends went to Costa Rica to wind down after an intense period. They ended their trip in Las Vegas, where Mario played his first high rollers, and he did so with good results. Playing these high rollers, it, it felt surreal the first time. Like I specifically remember it was after we went to Costa Rica and then we went to Vegas and I played the first Aria high rollers, I think the first 10k and 25k. I remember the first bind that I ever played was uh, I got second in 10k and the next day I got fifth or sixth in the 25k. You always work online and you try to improve and then you're like getting to a level where you play, I don't know, at 1k 50 player field on GG or like on stars and you know you're uh, profitable in the tournaments and you're winning in these tournaments and it doesn't get much tougher than that like if you play the the highest online like even at a lower buy-in these are the same fields that you play in the 10k life and 25k life maybe it starts at 100 and 200k the, the fields got got even more elite players but at that level it really doesn't change that much anymore and for me making that that learning okay i'm good enough to play in these fields uh, and I can compete in those fields was just like okay there was like a ceiling basically that was uh, putting myself on that was like breaking through them um, and being like okay these tournaments I'm profitable in them and there are weaker players playing them and I'm especially enjoying them playing. I barely even noticed like until he was like oh yeah all of a sudden he's in this like he's like in this 10k buy-in and I noticed like he really transitioned from like playing poker professionally and seriously to like all of a sudden like now the top prize for every tournament is like 100k, 180k or something like this. He's studying for like one, two hours, three hours every day and finally like to really see like him how so excited that it like pays off and that it really like he can see that he's getting so much better like every year, you know. He even says sometimes like, oh, I saw myself playing two years ago and I wasn't good back then at all and now I'm so much better and I was just like, I thought you were good then, I don't know. <laughs> I've just really seen him be so happy that like the work that he's put into it is really paying off. Despite some big results in Las Vegas, Mario's big break was yet to come. Two months yeah. later, he took down the $1,000 Scoop main event for $839,000. Yeah. Scoop was crazy. Uh, I remember because it was this start when it was after half a year after my grandmother passed um, and then we moved into that uh, into that house here it was uh, maybe a, i think we moved in early april and then end of april i won the scoop main like i i never been so emotional at winning a tournament um because it was like this this that, that it stops that, that like this anticipation okay now you use nine left and now you stop for a day and then you prepare for a, ta for a final table and that's just a different experience than playing it through because if you play it through then it's like 6 a.m. in the morning it's just like oh try to but like getting that prepared and like really focusing on it and um, and then winning it was a, a incredible experience since you asked for the piece uh, I had all the action I had a swap uh, two swaps with friends um, but I had the, the rest I didn't sell any any of the action I think for for us like him winning the the scoop main was really cool it was a really big i think boost for him that all of his work has paid off we were here in this house and him and Rolly and me were there like cheering him on and it was like the biggest thing ever and i remember before that like there had been hype around more things that he had done poker wise but like this was like massive it didn't change uh anything what it gave was a lot of uh peace of mind like a lot of confidence as well um because it was still early it was still like maybe half a year after the grinders and before that I was not not that good um, and I made a lot of improvements afterwards but it just gives you confidence and uh, knowing that you can uh, win tournaments like that. Obviously it's mostly luck at that point but uh, 
it just uh, yeah gives you, gives you an incredible amount of comfort and uh, makes it easier to go through tougher times afterwards so um, definitely changed uh, my inner peace uh, at that point because you're still dressed like at before you're like stri striving to like uh, make it on like have this breakthrough and then once uh, once it happens and you're just like okay you can you don't have that inner inner uh, drive or like inner uh, unease anymore for him I just think it meant so much to him like mentally I feel like I don't know for sure but I could see mentally for him it being like okay yeah finally like this is amazing like I'm studying so much I'm putting so much work into this I am really good and this is a really good thing for me to do because I love it the whole setup I currently have like being able to play from home um, having my own room my own space to be able to play from here that is what made for me a huge difference to have the routine okay when I'm playing I'm performing optimally and can prepare myself for that. That made, for me, uh, a big difference. Um, in terms of where I would see myself, I do enjoy competing online. That's where I, where I have the most, the most fun. There's still a lot of room to improve on this an incredible tough environment. And yeah, I think it's just, for me, I want to be in poker for the next 20 years because I really, I really enjoy and really love everything about it yeah i want to be in the the, the top uh, in the top circle he makes such a good balance with everything and i'm just so thankful that he he's just the best ever like he's really the best boyfriend ever <laughs> like it's so nice like to have like an amazing boyfriend that's so kind and sweet to everybody and generous and loving and hardworking. and yeah he's just he's amazing so <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support the channel and stay always up to date, then leave a subscribe here or check out our next video.